Hi, my name is Gabby Elvesi, and I'm executive director of Dallas Youth Poets. I've been a member of Dallas Youth Poets for six years, where I was formerly on the team, and now I'm the executive director. <laughs> Dallas Youth Poets uses poetry to promote healthy activism, mental health awareness, and personal, social, and emotional development in youth ages 14 to 21, equipping them to conquer, help others, con and help others conquer the unexpected obstacles in life. The first poet that I'm going to bring up has been in the poetry scene for six years, as long, just as long as I have. And she's what I would call a social butterfly in the poetry community, Jade Pina. Hello. Um, this piece is called Homelessness Address. We are a prideful, seclusive people. Teacher gives out homework, and the homeless kid poses for Less Than Life magazine on a set of stairs while wearing a bright red suit that he cannot afford. On October 5th, 2019, the day after Joker comes out, so do the memes, and my friend, I watch DC make the daily dance of depression and, and anxiety graceful, as if my mental illness being represented is a joke as if youth homelessness is a joke, as if our need to survive isn't valid, as if we are no longer viable human beings, one. My mother kicks me out at 16 in a fit of rage, throws what she let me keep off of the balcony and I reach into the far parts of my mind to find out how many times I fragmented my culture before the identity she created for me completely shattered like glass. It is not my job to educate people on their privilege but the privileged need to know that for some there's punishment in being who you are, like not being able to be who you are, like not being able to find heaven in your heritage or freedom in your own family. And I remember the day I came out to my mom. We were on opposite sides of a plexiglass window. I could hear the tremble in her voice, could feel the victory in mine. And she said, that's fine. Just don't call yourself my daughter. And my father said I figured with a smile and I should have known that he would because his love was all for me since the day that I was born. And he told me that I would always have a home wherever he was and I believed him too. Girl asked me why it can't be how it used to. We remember dreaming about surfing the stars and not couches and cars. And we remember the times when we didn't have to worry about being brave or about being ourselves or about not having enough to fill our music box hearts, but the grace of something greater than us all. We have been gifted people to pick up the pieces after we fall. And that is that piece. And I will now introduce Eris UIP alum to do their piece. Hi. Off the top of my head, a list of mirrors in my home would be the long hanging mirror on my closet door, the mirror to the left side of the living room, the mirror in my bathroom, the mirror in my mother's bathroom, the hanging mirror on my mother's door, sometimes the window of my bedroom, the trophy cases in the main hallway of my high school, my side mirrors when I hang my head out the car door to feel the wind most of the time, I can't remember what I look like unless I'm being looked at. But I know I'm a mirror of my mother and hopefully not my father. I'm a mirror of my family. I'm a mirror of the dirt and the water and the Texas mud. I'm a mirror of Indiana Jones. I can't hide anything from my mother and I hid everything from every man in my life and then hoped they wouldn't hear while I cried onto paper and called it art. Art is an imitator, right? Art is a mirror mirroring Greek statues of dead men painted white, fake crystal skulls and everything Steven Spielberg has ever done. You can smell lead in his money. And he is the poster child of worth reflecting a body while my mother's ex-husband had parents that painted their trees white half the way up the trunk to say mirror is an omen of God and grace. I imagine the Bible to be an imitation of small town Texas. Bloody Mary said to mirror is an excuse to either look or hide. I played peekaboo with a mirror. It won every time. And every time I thought about how it was just a piece of glass who had caved in on itself, imploded, destitute. Mirrors can see everything but remember nothing. 
My great grandfather died of Alzheimer's. He was a mirror too. So was the sand in between our toes on the beach that day, glistening and dead. When I die, I would like to be thrown into the ocean. I would like to cave in on myself as testament to reflections who die when people look away, who are only reminded of themselves when they are seen, like how babies play peekaboo because they can't remember you existed. I play peekaboo to bring myself here. I pray that it forgets these moments to exist with me unattended, uninformed, unmistakably present. We will let this pass together our gratitude for our sight, our beauty for our fullness, our attentiveness, our honeycombed skin, our eyes will follow every movement wholeheartedly just for us. We are just for us. And that's my poem. Thank you. So Connor has been has been a poet for six to eight, maybe ten years at this point. Um, so Connor was actually one of the first one of the poets that I was able to coach on my very first team when we took the when we took our team to Brave New Voices in Las Vegas. Um, so I'm about to give you the next poem. Um, so here. My kids ask me, how do I heal? They come to me, hands torn, heart shattered, pens, ready to suture their scars, I explain. Healing starts on the page, moves to the stage, and ends with yourself. I'm still learning to grasp that concept. See how I turn my demons powder so I can swallow them wholly. Trauma hurts less in a metaphor. Sickness doesn't sting in a simile. Slicing my palms to bleed onto paper makes my story more tangible. Sitting on a stage can make the grief stop. See me still spitting poems, hurt, tired, pissed, angry, worthless, lost, invisible, still birthing movements to be excluded out of them, breaching my body for people who never deserve the taste of my blood on their skin, searching for serenity in the static of the microphones. I cannot teach my children to heal when I am so quick to pick my scabs. You can only reword scab before it turns scar and a spotlight ain't skin cream. Kay aloe vera away my history. Like justice can occur in a coffee shop or a bookstore or a conference. Like, like an audience can restore the last parts of me that are no longer poet and still human. So when my kids ask me how do they heal, I tell them to write like you've been mute too long and it's time for them to hear you like ink is the only thing keeping your veins flowing like it's the last thing you're leaving this world because wars are only one with armies and them drafts be your soldiers. Spill all of yourself into a piece knowing you have nothing left. Find contentment in that to know that a poem can't mend your mind can't stop the tears from flooding so bottle it sell it on amazon it must be gold the way they tripping over this scream with a heavy heart and cloudy head screaming stops the thinking and if we cannot hear our own thoughts they cannot make us miserable healing is a masochist game it's breaking yourself over and over and over again so that this time your foundation will sit right throwing rocks at your tranquility for a good performance then finding solace on the cut crimson stain left on your fingertips it's gaslighting all of the acrimony boiling in the back of my larynx spitting out the acid to smile it's doing the one thing i know how to do give my everything and leave nothing for myself know that I have worth in that. It's fighting until you black out and your fists are swinging on their own. It's losing, looking at all of the destruction, soaking in the stench of the turmoil, showing the world your scars, unafraid of opening them again. Thank you for having Dallas Youth Poets with you today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of Big Bang.